Hi, I'm Chris Gardner with your tip of the day from Practical Help for Your Digital Life. You can find all my tips on my website, and I post lots of them on Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. I hope you'll join my member-supported website where you can also get tip sheets with helpful links and detailed how-tos. Please join today. Today's tip is about why your PC runs slower than it used to and what to do about it. So a year or so ago, you bought a shiny new PC. It was fast as lightning and life was good. Now it seems sluggish and hangs for long stretches. What a royal pain! Just a few years ago, with Windows XP, this was best solved by adding RAM and a bigger hard drive. But with Windows 7 or 8 and newer systems, it's more likely the slowness is caused by something you did or didn't do and isn't as easily solved. You might have installed a bunch of add-on programs and software and then uninstalled them, or forgot to. You might have solved system malfunctions by restarting your computer without shutting it down properly, by holding down the power button for about 8 seconds to shut it down and then pressing it once again to start it back up. That can cause problems and should only be used in an emergency. You might have installed some free programs from the internet, knowing that that may not have been the safest thing that you could do, but you wanted their free features. You might have installed and run some file sharing program to get free music or other media, or shared part of your hard drive. LimeWire, I'm talking about you. You might have neglected to install a good computer security suite, keep it up in its subscription, and keep the program up to date with the latest version and regular updates. You might have learned to ignore the obnoxious pop-up warnings that Windows puts up on your screen, and maybe some other ones not from Windows. You might have clicked on some website advertising or pop-ups or emails with fake warnings, and you might have opened a file attachment in email. You might have ignored Windows updates, much less updates for any other programs that you have installed on your PC, or installed them impatiently without waiting for them to finish properly before you went on to other tasks. You might have ignored problems when they first presented themselves instead of fixing them yourself or seeking help to fix them. Problems piled on top of each other until you got to the state your computer is in now. Now these are just a few examples, and what you did or didn't do resulted in one of these two things. First, errors in your Windows installation program or files or hard drive. And second, malware, spyware, adware, and perhaps computer viruses have taken up residence in your computer. To solve the first type of problem, follow these two steps. First, restart your computer in safe mode. Let the computer fully boot up into safe mode, which will take a while. Then restart your computer normally. Second, scan your hard drive for errors. This is set up through your hard drive properties and starts after you restart the computer. It'll take a while. I'd recommend that you avoid the various registry cleaner and optimizer programs. They generally won't help and may cause even more problems. Leave that stuff to a tech support professional. For the second problem, the solution is also pretty straightforward, but will take a bit more work. Here are four things you should do. First, go through your installed programs and uninstall anything you don't absolutely need. Go down the list and one by one uninstall unneeded programs, especially any toolbar or search helpers or file sharing or system optimization apps. Second, install, update, and run a good malware detector remover program like this one. Scan and remove anything it finds. Rinse and repeat until you get a scan that comes up with nothing found. You may have to restart the computer in between scans. Update and rescan monthly. Third, check your computer security program and upgrade update as needed. This is our current top performer for paid programs and a free version. Lastly, you need to develop habits to practice safe computing always. This is the hardest task and one that needs to be mastered by anyone who touches your keyboard. Here's just a few things to do and to not do. Avoid opening file attachments or clicking links in emails. Avoid installing any programs you don't absolutely need. Avoid toolbars and search helpers like the plague. Avoid file sharing programs the same way. Don't automatically click on pop-ups. Read them and try to discover where they came from before you take action. A quick internet search or ask a question on our website if you're not sure what to do. Stay away from shady websites and don't take any free offers. You can install Adobe Flash and Reader, but don't accept any add-on freebies from them. This is the 21st century equivalent of the advice, don't accept candy from strangers. And lastly, keep what programs you have installed up to date by doing system maintenance, checking for updates and applying them. Do this at least monthly. Think of this like taking your car to Jiffy Lube. 
Now these are just the most common things that you can do to combat a very active threat to your digital life by hackers, spammers, and other nefarious folk. If you have no luck with these, your problems may need more expert help to solve. If you find them too difficult to do, then you'll need to pay someone to do them for you, buy a new computer fairly often, or you may want to consider switching from a PC to a tablet. We find iPads are a lot harder to mess up. Just saying. As always, my members can grab my printable tip sheet and get more detail and links to resources I've mentioned here. And if you find my tips useful, please share them with your friends. Clicking the like button is great also. And don't forget to become a member of Practical Help for Your Digital Life. Thanks for watching.